Hello, it's Sarah. I'm back. I made one with a pink L because I, I didn't have any with pink and I thought I need pink in my life today. So this is what we did in the previous video. We're working on these little magnets. I'm just erasing the chalk lines. <sighs> my yellow is not opaque. <sighs> um, I haven't done a letter in yellow. None of my letters are yellow yet. Um, that one I can just let be. But I'm going to go over it a little bit. I don't know how I'm going to, um, because I've only painted a flower in yellow. I've not had to highlight it because I just shade it. Anywho, I thought I was ready, but I was painting up that other one. So we're going to highlight. And if you guys feel comfortable floating, float if you want to do that, if that's how you're comfortable. But I'm going to show you, it's like, it's a kind of a dry brushing technique. Um, I don't like that. Watch how I'm going to fix this with the black paint. I'll come in. So I just kind of lost some of the pointiness of my stroke. So I'm just putting out some black. Because that's what the background color is. So I'm just going to use my little brush here. I put a little black on it and then I can kind of reshape this by just going right on the background. Okay, I just made it look more even. That's it. I don't really have to touch anything else up. Okay. So to highlight, I'm going to use this, I told you this, um, yellow green, it's a Jasonia color. It just is going to make it look very crazy bright. Actually, look at, look at the way I did. This is just using the, the yellow green and this I added white to it. Just using the yellow green works just fine. So let's see what happens. Let's see what I get this time. I told you, I don't like doing anything the same twice. <laughs> I don't know. I do. I like repetition. I like, let's see, I guess it would be knowing where I'm going, but then when I actually do it, I give myself permission to change it up a little, you know, so it's the same, only different. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to use that same brush I've been using. This is a Number two, detailer. So it's like a round, but it just has a little bit of a longer bristle and a point on the end. And it's just good for strokes. So that's why I chose it. Now this time I'm not gonna add any um, flow medium to it. And I'm just gonna keep it a little thicker because this is what, so I had water in my brush. That's the only water I had. And then I'm just loading my brush and then I'm gonna kind of take off most of it. So it's just on the tip of the brush and when I come in, I want to use pressure in the beginning. So I want it the brightest at the tip. But then I'm going to lift up my, see it's not working. I just am not good at it yet, but it worked. I mean, it's good enough. Then I, I really want very little paint on my brush, and I'm just going to pull it up into that. And we're going to shade with, this, with the pencils. So we can always pull the shaded color over it to like knock that brightness down a little. Now, the, I'm gonna go back to this tip because this is gonna be my brightest color too. I wanna, I'm taking off a lot of the paint on my paper towel. And then I'm just gonna put the brightest part on the very tip. This is working. Because you can see the texture of the canvas coming through. And, I, and that's all I want. Because it's gonna be darker in the dip down and then it's going to be bright right here and then it's going to darken. So I'm going to, again, just reload my brush, just the tip of it, and then take off the, the thick color. And I'm going to start like right here. And it depends because if I wanted this to be on top, I am going to make it so that the part that goes around is on top of the other part. But I think I've done it both ways. Let's see. So it just depends which side you want to be on top. Nope, most of them are all. I just happened to do all of them. Oh, this one I didn't. <laughs> ha 
So see this one, I put the top part on top of the bottom. You see what I'm saying? So wherever you want, you know what, let me just do it that way. I'm going to do it that way. So I'm going to go bright right here and let it fade out because it's going to be shaded under here. So I'm just putting it bright and letting it kind of fade out here. So now it's going to be shaded on either side of that. So that's going to be dark, but I'm going to make it bright right here. You know how I like to pull toward me, so this is a little different, but I'm going to do it. It'll be bright right here. And it's going to fade because that's where the shading is going to go. Yay! So that's it. And then I'm going to just brighten this up a little more on the very tip. And then just let it fade out. And the same thing here. Really, oops. I had too much paint on the tip of my brush. I went on the black. I just don't want to do that. Okay. And then, so I just want to make sure I take off the majority of the paint. But I want it brightest right there. And then I'm going to phase out. Just let some of the background show through. And the same thing here, the brightest on this little area. And then just really let it phase out. I'm going to do that to all these letters. The only thing is I'm going to mix white into the base color to get the highlight. So I'm just going to load my brush in white. And then I'm going to take a little bit of that, what was it, aqua. And mix it into that. So it's mostly white with a tint of the aqua color. And I just want to keep it, again, mostly on the tip of my brush. Um, it's going to be shaded right here, so I'm going to go if you just feather it, like you feather the, the tip of your brush across the the canvas picks it up and then it leaves those little so that's my highlight there and I can always make it brighter after first we're just gonna let me put a little more aqua out because I didn't have any it was all dried up um, you can always brighten up your brights later but I'm just establishing where I want my highlight to be so I mixed up a little more color and just using the tip of my brush, I'm going to go this way this time. That's where I want the brightest to be. And then I'm really just going to let it fade out. Because I'm going to shade right there. And then I have to figure out which one is on top. I think it's going to be on top, this part. This is shaded, but this will be bright. And then it's going to fade out into that area. Kind of gives you a little three-dimensional vibe, right? And then the A, I hope, I'm sorry, the E. I hope the yellow is going to be bright enough if I just add white to it. This is why I don't, I'm not a teacher, because... I don't know the um, the rules of mixing, but I'm just adding white right now to the same yellow that I just used, and I'm going to see if it comes up bright enough that it'll show a difference in color. It looks kind of blah, actually. We'll see what it looks like. I'm going to do what I have to establish, which is on top. I think I want this part on top, and this is going to be underneath. So I'm going to start here, the brightest area, 
and then just let it kind of bleed out. This would be shady. Can you see that? It's not as, I'm going to get it brighter. The first layer is not the brightest. We'll get it brighter. And then this is going to be shaded, shaded. This is going to be bright. So we're going to get this bright. And then it's going to fade. And this is going to be the brightest. And then it's going to fade. And then this is going to be the brightest. And then it's going to fade. I have way, I had way too much paint on my brush for this technique, but it doesn't look bad. It's not wrong. Okay, don't, <clears throat> excuse me. I need to brighten that up. Mm. I could just use much more white and just a little bit of yellow. And then when I add the shading, it'll, you'll notice, I couldn't put a little more bright up here. I forgot a spot on my L. Um, so I'm going to add, I'm going to go right back into white. And just on a dirty brush, I had what was left of the highlight color. And I'm going to make a new puddle that should be much brighter. Yeah, that's brighter. So let's do it again. The brightest... And let it fade so I really pick up the pressure I'm hardly touching the surface I'm just tickling that shows up though that really made a difference same thing up here I want it to be brightest on the top of the E and let it fade out as it goes down to where it's going to be shaded and the same on here And the same on this side. I think that shows up plenty. I'm pretty happy with that. I gotta fix, I gotta do one part of the um, L with that. It's just the straight um, yellow, yellow green right here. It's going to be shaded here, but I want it to be highlighted right here. And then fade out. See how I'm not as good when I don't pull toward myself. Maybe I'll just, we won't do any shading. Alright, now for the heart, it's going to be a little more interesting. You're going to need a bigger brush probably. I'm going to go ahead and go with the number three round, but it is a bigger area. You're not going to worry about your flower. So if you get any on your flower, you can touch it up. But we're going to basically just mix white again into the base coat color. So I need more white on my palette. And I'll show you. You're going to just take white. So I'm going to load my brush in white. Let me come over here. So I'm going to take, just load my brush with the white. So I have plenty of white on my brush. And then I'm just going to take a little swipe of red and make a new puddle. Comes like a pink, like a corally pink. Now I want to wipe my brush off. I don't want all that color. We just want to utilize the tip of the brush, really. So when I come over here, I'm really just focusing right on this edge. Let's see. See how I want it to be bright, really just on the tip, and then I kind of just rubbed it right there. Let's see the other ones I've done. So I focus it on the edge and just kind of let the paint come off my brush as I keep going. Um, this one's really crazy like bright it was too I didn't this was the only pink card I did but I I think my highlight color was way too bright to begin with I should have um gotten it built it up to be that bright it doesn't look it looks fine so this is what you're going for you just want it to be the brightest at the very tip and then kind of let it fizzle out and it's a dry brush motion that we're going to use so 
again I'm just going to tip into that little highlight color I made and I'm going to start on the tip of this see how bright it is though don't be scared I want it bright on the tip but then I just want to pick up my pressure really not put much down and this could be too bright too I might have I might have needed to just barely change the color first but if you do it gently you can get it to kind of graduate down that's that's the idea but if it's really hard just go in with a, a more dark color like don't go to this brightest bright yet I'm impatient and I so I'm just really feathering my brush over this canvasy texture and it picks it up it picks color up off my bristles and I think I'm going to leave that side I am going to put a little just around this edge of the top and then the rest is going to be shaded so I might come back and just put a little pop of a little brighter over there but other than that I think that did it like it looks highlighted to me so I'm just taking again the same color that I already brush mixed and I'm going to take it off my bristles with my paper towel and just kind of put it here and I'm going to shade in between the petals of the flower so I can darken this up I think it's too dark right now but I'm going to pencil over it and it'll it'll lighten it up I don't think that would necessarily be highlighted because it would be in the shadow of the flower. Just adding a little more color. This is just for fun and it looks good to me. So I'm even going to put a little down here. And I'm going to shade that, but that looks good to me. It's a little dark. I'm not, I'm not pleased. I could have been more gentle on that side. But let's get the pencils out. Oh wait, we didn't do the, um, I guess we'll do the flower. I'm going to do the tips of the flower using the number three round again and do the same thing. Maybe um, take some white on your brush and then just take a little bit of that, what was it called, Pacific Blue and make a lighter version of it. And then really wipe your brush off and then just put the tip of the of the brush and we're going to really just do the tips I think I have too much moisture in my brush from when I rinsed it so same thing I'm just going to hit the very edge and pull it down and when I shade I'll go up into it a little more so it'll it'll blend it'll blend you'll see if it's too bright put more blue in your paint color because I like it like this so I'm not I think it might be because I'm I don't build up the color but I I like it and it fades a little bit so after we shade, we can always add another layer of highlight if we lose the brightness, you'll see. So regularly or normally when I paint, I would be doing shading and highlighting with floating, with the floating technique. So this is just fun for me. It's different. I'm going to add a little bit of um, highlight to the center of the flower and to the, um, I just want to use this yellow green again to the, the green, the leaves, and the um, flower center. Again, just using the very tip of this number three round. Just wash, rinsed off my brush. I'm just, I have only the very little water in my bristles. And I'm just tipping it into that, and then blending it, and then I'm gonna get it off. Like I just wiped my brush on a paper towel. Oh, let me do the tips. Just tip it a little bit. Cute. 
cute, right? And then I'm going to put it on the top of the center. So just kind of trace along the top of the center, like make a line, and then just pull down. And I'm going to shade it too. So that's it. Let me make this a little more. Make this a little more. I hear the birds cheeping. It's so cute. They're so busy out there. Okay. See, because then you could just fiddle around and keep playing. I want to brighten up the blue too. But let me show you the shading. So the shading, I, I chose a few colors of pencils that I think worked pretty good. I have the I have this big one of the Prismacolor pencils. So this is, let me see, 72 colors. And so I have a really good range of different flavors for that. So I think I picked, this is called Denim Blue for this color. For It's like, this is Pacific Blue, but I'll show you what Denim Blue, I think it looks good. I'm just going to sharpen, let me take a sip of my water. I use this sharpener. Jarlin, Jarlins. Charlinx, I don't know. And it's like a grinder. It gets it really sharp. I break the tips a lot because I'm very heavy-handed. But basically, it's like... <coughs> colored pencil is very, like... You just push... Let me get a piece of paper. It depends how hard you push, how dark your shading is. So I'm pushing pretty hard, then I lighten up my pressure, then I barely touch. That's how you're going to shade. So let me see if I, I'm in the shot. So like here's the petal. And we're going to start at the bottom. I kind of almost outline it sometimes with the darkest. Then I just pick, I make little baby circles and put my little medium value and then you just pick it up. And the technique I'm going to use, I'm going to do here and leave the edges like not shaded. So I'm just going to lighten my pressure all the way up to the middle. Oh, I wasn't even in the shot. So this is the flower petal. We're going to darken. Let me see if I'm in the shot. I'm so sorry. I think my camera, I'm going to pull my camera a little forward. Okay, because I think just my natural, um, right where I think I, yeah, this is good. So we're going to, I'm going to keep it right in this area and leave this the highlighted area. So I'm dark, darkest pressure, then lighten up my pressure, medium to like barely touching the surface. You can go a little me more medium up the sides. But it's just fun to play. So practice on a piece of paper. And then when you go to your piece, we're going to start right at the base where the, um, what's this? It looks like a bead, a broken bead. Hopefully I'm in the shot. Ooh, I'm really down low. But that'll be good. All right, I just don't want it to be too uh, jumpy or something. I shouldn't come out of the shot. But when I focus on what I'm doing, it it happens. So I'm going to start at the bottom. That's dark, medium. I kind of kept it. You see it? You can outline it a little bit. Like I'm just going to go like that and kind of get a U shape of the dark. Medium. And very light up into the center. Camera's not picking this color up so great, but basically it's the same thing. I start right in the center. I make a little U shape of the darkest value. So I'm pushing the hardest. Then I start to pick up my pressure. And by the time I'm in the middle, I'm just barely touching the surface. It'll look better. And 
you can erase these these pencils are erasable so if you feel like you go out of lines or if you want to lighten it up like if you really can't get a light value you can erase it and it like turn it it's a helper so I'll do a different color so that you can see but that that's how that's what shading looks like with pencil it's very cool let's go in with the red because I want to show you I could do two colors with the red this one's called raspberry this one's called poppy red and I don't think it's going to show up as much but I really like the color so I'm just laying some down this is all kind of heavy pressure I'm not really lighting lightening my pressure when I use the other pencil I will I don't know I just like it's 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 such a orangey red but this raspberry is is my darkening color so let's go up to here where the where I want to shade behind the flower really just dark right up against the petal and then let it peter out so right here in between the petals is the darkest right here and then it's going to peter out as I go up and even into that highlighting can you see yeah you can see it it's hard to see on camera in the darkest areas where the most pressure and then I'm lightening up my value lightening up my my pressure I should say but that's where you want the darkest in right up against the center almost and then you just lighten up your pressure A little more. A little bit around the uh, leaves. But this is just for fun. It's not realistic. And then right at the bottom of the heart, I'm giving it real hard pressure. I'm filling in a lot of that canvasy bumpelies. And then I'm, this is medium pressure right now. And then barely feathering it up into there just to get some up there but it's darkest down here and if it gets Erica Joanne has like a a wispy brush that she uses to like get the um, pencil flakes off but that's basically it that's the shading if I want to I could get really um, detailed and add another layer and another layer so that's the red let's I think the blue is going to show up really nice this color is called um, peacock blue so I'm going to sharpen it just make sure you have a sharp pencil it's just easier to get into the little sections so I'm just going to make sure right now we know that this is where the kind of like if it's a ribbon it flipped around so this is the front of the ribbon and this is the inside back of the ribbon so I'm gonna make a line right there that's darkest pressure medium light and it just barely touches the surface so let's do that again darkest right up against the ribbon and then I'm gonna lighten the pressure until it like kinda of blends in darkest here medium and then I'm just I'm just letting it touch into the highlight so that looks good you can see that and then for the green I'm using moss green same thing we want to really establish where the ribbon I'm gonna just call it like a ribbon flips over itself so right here this ribbon is on top of this ribbon so I'm gonna make a line and then I'm gonna medium and now I'm into low and I'm just feathering it on top of the highlight so it like blends I think I'll just put a little here but I don't need it and then we want it on top of this medium light and then on this side dark medium light dark medium maybe a little here what 
color should I use for the yellow? That's the thing I didn't get. I could just use um, burnt sienna. This is called light umber. I think I'm going to use light umber. Because I could use like a dark yellow, but I think a brown is perfect. So let's just try it. I can always erase it. This one's going to show up the best. So we want to make sure we establish that this part is on top of that. So I'm going to make a line right across the darkest value. Medium. Barely touching into the highlight. Darkest value is the line. I'm already medium. Barely touching into the highlight. I'm going to put a little bit right here. Barely touching. Put a little darker. Barely touching. And then right here, dark. Barely, barely touching. See, that's the, that is the best transition of color. Like, it's the easiest that, for you to see the highlighting and shading. Now, if you feel like it's not bright enough, you can always go back with a little bit of black or maybe a dark umber. Let me show you that. I haven't done it on any of my other pieces because I just think these are gentle little pieces that you don't need to... Oh, I didn't do my leaves. We could put a little bit of dark at the bottom and just blend it into the highlight and a little on the bottom. You can barely see it, but I'm going to use the dark or maybe sepia. Sepia is a good color or dark umber. Let's see. Where is it? This is called... I, I had them out. Oh, this is brown sienna. Sienna brown. But the sepia is really dark. I just, I just play around. I just pick a color and see if it looks good. But I'm going to just, since this is what I have, the sienna brown, I'm going to do a second coat on some of the stuff. So let's do a second coat on top of the green. Really just in the darkest areas and then fade out. I think that 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 shows. I can see the um like I could t you know what I have a really cool eraser that I want to show you guys. This is a Tombow eraser. It's called the Mono Zero. Elastomer eraser. Anyway, it's like a really pointy eraser. And it gets in there like to, when I want to get the crumbs off of the black. So let's take a little bit of this to the, you know, let's do the blue and see what happens. Right up against it in the darkest and then really just let go of my pressure. I think it's showing up. I think you're definitely getting the point. So just like if you were floating, sometimes you go back in with a second color. I'm going to just put a little bit here. Don't need it. The, the yellow is the one that's showing up the most. Let's see if it really affects the red. I could even use black. Just a touch. And Erica always reminds you that there's a lot of pigment in the black pencil, so you really don't need a lot. But sometimes you do need it. I think that looks good. I think I see shading and highlighting. Maybe not as much around here. So let me just take a, t I'm going to take a tiny bit of black and show you what it does. I hope I don't lose. Only in the darkest, darkest areas. Does that look okay? I think it does. Yeah. Oh, I see it on camera. Ooh. I think I'm going to put it right here. Oops. See how I went a little bit too much on the top part?
just right at the line. All right, let's do our gold. So for the gold, again, I think I'm gonna use the liner brush this time instead of the um, detailer. I have this liner brush, it's called Midliner 5.0, and I'm gonna use gold. And I'm just using my Glorious Gold, my DecorWart. I love it. I got a big bottle. <laughs> and I am gonna water it down a little bit, but this is gonna be a case of if you get too wide of a line, so by watering it down, I have a little bit of water on my brush, and then I just make a puddle with that. So it's not just straight from the bottle. It's a little bit waterier, you know, but not too waterier. Anyway, I want it to be a fine line, and I also don't mind if it gets thick and thin in some areas. And the way I've done it on these other ones is by, um, let's see, deciding again no, when it's over or under, I'm going to continue. So let's just start here. I think I'm going to make it thicker up here. Watch, I'll show you. I'm going to come in so I can show you. So how this tip of this L is thick to thin, I'm going to make it my gold line thin to thick. I'll show you. I'll show you why. It just looks cool. Actually, I think I'm going to pull it this way. So I'm going to make it thicker here and leave it thin there. And that's really thick, but it I don't I can always take my black and shave it down a little. So I like that. I think I want to do it it's going to come all the way down. So this one's not going to be too thick. I think I'm going to make it thick here and then thin. All right, so watch. In other words, I'm gonna go, making sure I'm in the shot. Thick. And then I'm gonna make it thin. So we're just gonna use the edge of my liner and stop there, because it goes under Whenever you put paint over pencil, it can smudge it. So a lot of times Erica will have you put the all-purpose glazing medium, let me see. And if you don't have it, you might want to spray um, it with a fixative, like a workable fixative, before you varnish. That's important because the properties will pull your, it will smudge your pencil in the, the varnish so just be careful so I'm gonna make this thin and it's gonna go on the outside so thin like that so that's how that looks and then I'm gonna make it thin thick thin I don't know why <laughs> So again, it's like a stroke. So I'm gonna go thin. I have to pull it away. I have to pull it like this. So thin, thick. So I kind of like filled it in. I don't know. This is the first time I'm really doing it like this. And then thin. That looks good. So just play around with it. I'm gonna go thin, thick. So kind of like the opposite of what the blue line was. This is a little more difficult, let's see. Just thin, I'm just gonna do a thin line right here. bumped into it and then I'm going to do thin. Uh, I could do thick to thin. That looks cool. 
So I'm just playing around. This is just fun. So this is thin, so I'm going to do thick over here. Here we go. Thick to thin. And the same thing. I'm just going to do thin. We're going to go thick to thin. Right there. And it's kind of blending in, but you can see it when you tip it. And then this will all just be thin. I can touch it up with the black. I'm going to do it the same thing on the heart. I'm going to go thick and then thin up to here. So I'm going to just put the brush down and let it be wide. I kind of painted it. I stroked it in to thin. Same thing over here. I think I'm going to go thin, thick, but it might bump into that. I think I'll just do thin. See how I turn my brush on its side? So it's like thin, that's wide, that's thin. That looks cool. So just play with it. Um, I'm going to go around the leaves. I'm going to use my little liner, my littler one. I have a much, much finer. This is actually a Chris, Chris's Epic Script Scroll Liner, Script Liner, 18 slash zero. So not a lot of bristles, very pointy. Oops. I'm going to do it on the flower. So let's do... Uh, I think I do want to outline it, but let's make it round. I'm going to just do all that side. See what it looks like. I'm kind of doing it thick, thin. Am I in the shot? Oh, jeez. See how I forget because I get so. That looks cool just like that. And then I'm just going to outline the leaves. So I go like this. I just don't really have to be perfect. Let me put the... Um, just kind of stroke it in. Oh, so cute. The little center is going to have um, a bling in the middle. Oh, we need a little line around the edge. So just up against your checks. And just take your time. You're going to run out of paint eventually. Like, so just try to use the tip very tip of your brush you can sign your name with a pencil but I like to use paint I don't know why let me see I didn't sign this one I've been trying see that's paint that's orange paint orange paint what did I use here yellow paint green paint but I have signed with pencil before. Um, where am I? Lining. I think James is leaving for work. I'm going to give him a hug. Oops, that got a little thick. So I'll just pick it up with a Q-tip. 
and then I'll touch it up with black because this has like mica in it so the mica s gets smeared onto the like then you'll see little shine all over which you know bling is good so it's okay are you getting going James um, I'm go to the oh okay all right I'll see you in a bit oh sorry are you recording a video yeah, I'm going to go to the gym and I'll show you guys. Okay, honey. I'll see you in a bit. See ya. So I'm going to just take the black and fix those places like that I want to fix now. Right here. Uh, wherever I just smudged. Look, I got gold right there. Right here. So what do you think? Oh, then you can always do dots. Don't forget dots. I like this one. You know what I want to do? I think I want to use the pencil and make a, black, a blue line down the center. Of the petal. I didn't really need it. But I think I'm going to put a little um, a dot there. Hmm. So here's what I did with dots. Let's go back up. So this one I went crazy and just put dots all over the over the heart. I think I put some dots here on the L. This one I used bling to make dots. I did them in white too. I put a few on here, just dots. So this one only has bling right here. I didn't put any dots. Oh, I put dots around my flowers, but I put no dots anywhere else. On these, I did made dots with bling. And then I did dots going down the heart, which I like. And this one I did the same thing, but then I also put bling, red bling and just like a bling on each end of things so it's personal preference I think some nice white dots would also bring some pop but maybe pink I don't know I kind of want white all right we're going to go into white I'm going to use a stylus and I think I'm going to use I'm going to put it right here put, I'm going to put some white dots there and see what they look like I don't hate them. That looks good. And I don't think I need them maybe down the heart. But they would look good. I wonder if white or just pink. Like the same color that I highlighted with. That would be kind of cool. It's just that I have to mix it. But this is just regular pink. I didn't use it anywhere else. Um, what if I use the same color as the flower? Ugh, I think I'm done. So I'm going to put my name. I think I could fit Sarah right here, but I think I might put it right here and I'll put a 24. I'm going to use what I have the turquoise. Um, yeah, I think I'll use the turquoise. Actually, I want to use the yellow. Because yellow is all the way over there, I'll bring it over here. I don't know why. <laughs> and I'll show you. My, my husband has a really cool signature, and I'm jealous. But when you have an S in your name, so Joe's is like this. It's so cool. So my husband's name is Joe. So he goes J, oops, J, E. Isn't that cool? See how it's an E and a J? I don't have anything like that, so I just write Sarah. <laughs> um, I've, si I've signed my name so many different ways, so you do want this very, very thin, so I can just really not make thick lines, and just kind of gently... I'm 
really, really using the tip of my brush. And this is my very, very little liner. Just get it on there. You can always sign the back. You don't have to have your name on the front. But I love putting my name and the date. Like So I'm just going to put a 24 right here. Because in 10 years from now, you'll know when you painted it. And I have painted things for years. Like, I think some of the oldest stuff is um, 89. That's pretty old. All right, so that's it. I think I'm done. I didn't put dots down there. <clears throat> you know what? Why not gold? Let's just do gold. <clears throat> can't beat it. You can't beat it. <clears throat> I'm going to use my big, the biggest stylus is this green one. And I'll just go and they kind of graduated. That looks good. It's fine. It's done. All right. Now, why I'm, I'm going to do this for you guys, and I know you might not even have any, but this is the all-purpose sealer, and it's what um, I can't find it. it. has a black lid. Where is it? I just was... This is varnish. Here it is. All-purpose sealer. Fast drying glaze medium. That's what I mean. Not all-purpose sealer. Fast drying glaze medium. And all it does is create a barrier between the varnish and the piece. And its properties won't smudge. It's just that... Let me make sure. I, have, I want to fix one thing with black. They won't smudge the pencil, but you can't just keep pulling over it. So I'm going to show you how Erica showed us how to do it. I like it. I'm happy with this. I'm not going to keep fudging with it. I like it. I think it turned out really cool. Cool. <clears throat> I'm just going to hit it with my... Um, This is an embossing tool, but it definitely will just dry that. Okay, so I am going to, I'm just going to put it right here. This is clear, and, and you want to use a dry brush, so something that's not had water on it. So this is dry. And then I'll show you how you do it. This is how Erica taught us. You don't need a ton. This is a small, so that's my all-purpose, what is it called? Fast drying glaze medium. And I'm just going to take a dry brush and let it soak into it. And then you just don't even put pressure. Just kind of drag it across. A thin, it's not like very thick coat. But when it dries, and it'll dry quickly, it has that barrier. That's it. That's all I need. I don't think anything um, pulled, although I see a line right there. That's weird. I don't know. That's weird. I wonder if it pulled. Ooh, and that had gold on it. My gosh. I just smudged gold all over the place. Because it's on the black, I'm not worried about it. There's no pencil there. But there will be like a little gap of um, when I put my varnish on, sometimes I'm not sure if it uh, if the varnish knows that there's no sealer there. So I'm just putting a little more sealer right there. I'm just letting it dry. So is that so cute, you guys? I think it's so cute. So this is a magnet. But like I said, I did it on a box as well. I have done these on a decoupage box. Where is my decoupage box? I had a little box that I did. Um, but Oh, here it is. This is not. It's paper mache. My husband made these on the Glowforge. I used to love my boxes from AC Moore. But this is a um, paper mache box that I just decoupaged on top of. 
with um, napkins and um, you could just do that like look they have smaller I could just do a big one of these with love you know and I don't know what to put on the base of the box if I put in the comments should I decorate this is what this one looks like let me come up I haven't sealed it yet because I'm not sure like maybe just put a line around the bottom or something just something but I think this was a lot and that's why I left this one this one's varnished already this is already done I just left it plain on the rim so I made like these big flowers and hearts So I could do something like that. I could just put like, I don't know. See, that's the part I struggle with the most is design is like to decide what to put on there or just leave it blank. And then I was thinking I could always add feet. These are just little wooden balls, but you could glue these and paint them in colors too to make, to give it a little more pizzazz. So maybe I do that and it like pulls the color down like that, you know, lots of little ideas. So this one's done though. I could still put feet on this one, just paint black feet. <clears throat> so that's it. So let's see where our piece is. Where's our piece? Here, I put it here. Once the um, glazing medium dries, then you can just varnish a couple times. So, and then you have a magnet. All right, you guys, I hope you like this little project. <clears throat> Love is awesome. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not judge. The yellow looks like the green, so I'm not sure that I would do another yellow one, but I think they're all unique. Thanks for watching. Have a grateful day.